What's going on, uh, YouTube modeling community? Uh, Big Boonski here. Um, coming at you with a little update. Uh, it's been a while since I did one. Kind of been, uh, I was working on the Merc, you know, last you guys saw, but I have a uh, Facebook uh, group that I'm in that's, I'm in, uh, they're doing a group uh, contest, build off, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, the de the start date for that came up and so pretty much I've been just working on that um, I've had a few questions or comments on previous videos of mine as far as uh, doing the frame stretching on uh, the trucks that I build uh, and I haven't I I keep meaning to do this video and I just hadn't gotten around to it and uh, each truck build that I've done goes by and I'm like oh that would have been a good one to do that video on but uh, I hadn't gotten to it so uh, I uh, remembered this time to actually make the video so I'm at that point now where I think I can uh, pretty much just show you guys how I do it I tried to make the video to where I could show you guys as I was doing it while I was making the video and I just, I can't do it like that. It takes too long and I don't have the ability to edit the videos to where I can piece them together and, you know, pause and go skip forward and do all that stuff because I do everything from my phone. Um, speaking of doing everything from my phone, if you guys have asked me a question in, your, in the comments of the video, don't think I'm ignoring you. Uh, I'm not. I haven't... Um, for some reason on the phone, I guess, when you go look at YouTube on the phone or whatever, you can't get to your your PM box or your inbox as far as your messages go. So when you reply to a PM, you can't really reply to a PM. You can read your PM, but you can't really reply to it. So I don't know how that whole thing works. Like I said, I operate just through my phone right now because my, I don't have a computer right now. So uh, as far as anything I need to do from the laptop or from the actual computer is um, really far and few between right now just because I don't have access to one on a regular basis. So uh, if you guys ask me a question and I don't write, you know, get back to you right away, don't think I'm ignoring you. I, I'm not. I just uh, don't have the ability to uh, answer you at that moment in time so uh, but I'm trying to get to everything so that being said um, the frame stretching on the truck there's I'm sure truck builders out there do it a lot of different ways you know there's there's a lot of guys out there building trucks and um, I uh, I just have my own way of doing it so uh, like I said I, I'm not saying that this is the way it should be done but I've had a couple guys ask me uh, to do a video on it, so uh, that's what I thought I'd do. So uh, let's let's get to it, guys. I have um, the uh, like I said, this is a Facebook build, uh, Facebook build off. So uh, I'll show you the kit I'm doing, and then I'll go into the uh, the frame and what I've done to it so far. This is uh, this is the kit I'm building. For the uh, build off, it's the Mobius kit, the Lone Star. I have uh, I've heard that the Ravel of Germany kit is the same kit, um, so uh, there's really no difference. It's the same kit as far as I know. And um, so this is what I've got going. This is the frame. As you can see, I've stretched it. I think uh, it's about. Uh, two inches almost, I guess. Maybe a hair more. Right at two inches. Um, and what I do is I always look at my directions first and find out the best place to cut the frame, the frame rails. And I usually do it right where the there's no there's gonna be nothing mounted to the frame it's usually somewhere right in between the the first back axle and the back of the cab um, is usually where there's a good you good part of the frame rails that don't have uh, any cross members or 
any uh, anything on the inside because what I do is I cut the frame and then I start bracing from the inside out and what I'll do is I'll take a piece of sheet styrene and on the inside right here and right here I make it as tight as I can so that the that it adds structural uh, integrity when you um, put it inside the C channel of this frame this flat piece of styrene uh, and then I glue that first I'll glue one rail first get it get it set to the length that I want and then uh, once I do that by doing the gluing to the inside first when I glue the second one it'll give me a few seconds before before the glue sets to where I can make sure the length is right and uh, both rails end up basically exactly the same length once you've got once I've got the inside piece of styrene glued in to both rails then I'll move to the outside and uh, I just find a try to find a thicker piece of styrene from my parts box or wherever or double up on a couple of the thinner pieces and try to make it the, th the same thickness as the rail and then basically it's just about sanding and filling till it's smooth and once you paint and f fill all this in you won't see any of the lines and uh, if you don't want to do all the body work to actually fill the gaps and stuff like that because you can get pretty close with the uh, with the styrene if you make straight cuts you can get it pretty close to where you might not need any body filler or anything like that but uh, when I when I build these trucks usually I'll build a three-sided frame shroud over this anyway so uh, a lot of guys just make an inlay that that lays inside the frame to make a decorative piece but I build a three-sided it just it makes it easier for to get a cleaner look when you strap have the stretch frame and um, but I have done the insert as well. So if you do the insert, you'll need to do more body filler and more sanding to make the uh, to make all these seams go away. But if you don't, you don't really need to worry about it. If you're going to build the shroud just basically over the frame, you really don't need to worry about it. And then I just use regular styrene tubing to add uh, more cross members because when you get the kit, you only get so many. And uh, you definitely want to add bracing in there. So what I do is I usually add one in the center and then one on the edges where the styrene meets the original part of the frame. And then I'll, I'll, I'll do this one, the center one I'll put in the center and then the, these two I'll put one up towards the top and uh, one down towards the bottom of the edge of the rail. And it, just, it makes it pretty strong. Um, when I do it like that, later on when the trucks all built and you don't have to worry about picking it up by the frame and even though it's a lot longer than it's supposed to be uh, it'll support the weight of the model itself because of the way you did it with uh, the insert on the inside of the frame and the outside of the frame if you just do end-to-end -end styrene here it you'll go to pick it up and it'll break so you need that you need that structural integrity from the inside and then glue everything together and that's where you get your length from so that's what I've got guys um, uh, if, you, if you guys have any more questions just uh, feel free to let me know and I'll uh, try and answer them for you other than that guys that's all I've got um, I'm just working away on this when I can so uh, alright Big Boonski I'm out peace